Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday, August 23rd. Here in the Atlantic, we have newly formed tropical storm Joyce, well east of Isaac in the central Atlantic. This will be a recurve, probably out to sea somewhere near Bermuda, maybe something for them to watch on that island for the next several days. But r right now, not a significant or imminent threat, and we can safely kind of ignore this storm while we watch Isaac, which is going to be our land impacting storm, stealing most of our focus. If you look at Isaac this morning, it's been on a more organizing trend this morning. Last night it was struggling quite a bit. The surface center came in west of Dominica, but the mid-level center came in west of St. Vincent, so there was a lot of decoupling going on with the centers not stacked. Since then, the mid-level center looks like it has come northwest, and the two are more vertically aligned in here, and you can see a little bit more well-defined rotation that is now starting to move off towards the west-northwest, and this should consolidate pretty well today and start strengthening um, into a moderate to strong tropical storm before interacting with Hispaniola in 24 to 48 hours. What will help it is that it's uh, slowed down quite a bit. It was moving 21 miles per hour coming into the islands, has since slowed to nearly half that at 13 miles per hour, and uh, this will aid it. shows that it's uh, starting to overcome the effect of the trade winds in the Caribbean with the weakening ridge to the north and the large circulation. The pattern is starting to move into its favor, and the slower movement as it starts to round the ridge should uh, allow it to develop a little bit quicker now. Here's the 500 millibar map showing the ridge off to the north, starting to back off a little bit to the east in the central Atlantic. The nose of it extends into the Bahamas just east of the Florida Peninsula, and we can verify that by looking at the sounding out of Miami this morning, showing the low-level easterlies, but then the flow shifts to southerly as you get above the 700 to 600 millibar level, indicating that the mid-level steering ridge is just off to the east of the state here. And you can see our weakness, our little trough, over the eastern Gulf Coast and southeast United States, and the trough that left it behind is gone now. You can see the flat flow over New England, and this is going to remain stuck down here underneath this blocking, and this pattern isn't going to change much over the next four to five days, which means that Isaac is going to be able to sneak around to the western periphery of this ridge pretty close to Florida here, and in general this pattern looks like it's going to point it into Florida no matter which kind of adjustments we have to make. That state is going to be what gets the bulk of this system. If we look at the forecast models right now, we can see that, uh, again, coming over Hispaniola, mostly Haiti now. The adjustments last night, because there's been some relocations of the center, and depending on where this really gets going, uh, could affect exactly where it interacts with the Dominican Republic or Haiti, um, but it will probably uh, uh, go into eastern Cuba after that. And again, these mountains are going to be the biggest uncertainty that we have with this entire track. The biggest uncertainty by far are these mountains because they, they are known for jerking systems around due to frictional effects. Hispaniola is known to jerk systems north and then throw them west, handing them off to Cuba. And uh, with the interaction with eastern Cuba now, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens there. Until we get past the mountains, none of this is set in stone. But you can see the model consensus pretty much towards Florida, and the NHC is with the consensus just west of Tampa by day five as a category one hurricane. And there's still a little bit of spread. The models have been fairly consistent, but small shifts have still occurred in the last 24 hours, and we're going to have to keep an eye on uh, how these evolve. The European is still the farthest west and is the outlier here showing a landfall near Mobile, Alabama in seven days. This is a little bit farther east than the New Orleans landfall it had yesterday, but it's still the western outlier, and I think it may be starting to make its correction towards the east, and I still think it has been a little bit out to lunch with how far west it has been. If we look at the upper pattern from the GFS by day three, you can see the storms in eastern Cuba, and notice how the mid-level ridge extends over the northwestern gulf all the way through Louisiana here. You can see the north northerly winds in the mid-levels south of the Florida of uh, the Florida Panhandle and for the European to have this trying to come northwest right into this ridge doesn't make a lot of sense to me and I think the other models have a better idea that this recurves around the western periphery of this ridge over here to the east of Bermuda and you can see that we have the two ridges with the break right in between over the Carolinas here and it's going to be a fight still to see exactly how the storm interacts with this weakness and how it moves into it. I still think there's a chance that this comes um, directly into the weakness just east of the Florida coastline. The problem with this is again the mountains because if we look at the mid-level steering flow at 700 millibars slightly lower in the atmosphere we see the ridge isn't quite as weak in here so we have low-level easterlies coming over Florida and if Cuba can hold on to the storm some of these GFS runs have looked like it gets hung up on the Cuban mountains and it doesn't let it go until it gets west of Florida and that could be what what shoves it farther west. Cuba can sometimes hang on to these storms 
storms make them dance with the coastline and that could easily shift the track farther west if Cuba lets it go early and it comes right through the passage it can probably hit this weakness just east of Florida or along the coast there uh, but there's still a lot of adjustments that can be made we have the short range ensemble forecast mean just off Palm Beach in uh, four days or so. This is the mean of all the North American mesoscale models showing that there. The Canadian is also near the eastern coast of Florida, a little bit hard to see here, but again, right on the coast. And the GFDL comes right in towards the southeast Florida coast as well. So it's not like there's no models showing this, um, but I am still a little bit east of the consensus. Uh, my track still takes this. Uh, pretty close to the eastern Florida coastline and uh, again the cone pretty close off to the east it really can't travel much farther east than the Bahamas but the cone is farther open to the west more uncertainty in this area again uh, because we have more models over there and also because of these mountains which are the biggest uncertainty by far with this system until we get past those we're not going to have anything nailed down for sure because there are some unpredictable unpredictable things that these mountains can do to the storm there's really no way to know exactly how they will affect it but we know that it will weaken the storm as it comes across here should be a moderate tropical storm coming in weaken a little bit coming out and then i think will strengthen a little bit better on the other side of cuba than it did in the caribbean and could easily become a hurricane if it gets water time on either the east side of florida or the west side of florida might not be able to become a hurricane if it goes right into south florida straight after coming off cuba if it doesn't get enough water time but the waters are very warm here and the conditions aloft will be favorable so look for a strengthening storm in earnest as it approaches the united states so it's something to keep a very close eye on as far as the track goes right now we're talking about four to five days out here with a landfall in Florida, almost no matter way you slice it, no matter which way you slice it, Florida is going to be in the teeth of this thing uh, some way or another. And four to five days, the forecast error is over 250 miles on average. And right now, I'm only 150 miles to the east of the model consensus. So really, we're only playing with small adjustments relatively for the four to five day track. The models have been known to shift, and the track has been known to be different, even if the four day out forecast seems fairly nailed. So there's lots of room for adjustment in here of the long term track especially as it comes across the mountains again as I mentioned. Now tonight we get a recon G4 mission into the storm where they fly at the upper levels and drop drop sounds and take observations of the steering layers north of the storm. And th this data will be going into the forecast models on the 0Z suite tonight and if those runs remain west or shift even farther west at that point with all that uh, good data in there that would be when I shift a little bit farther west with this but for now I still think it sneaks a little bit farther north we'll see if any more models come my way um, but again Florida is going to be getting this no matter what happens here most likely so everyone in here needs to be watching this quite closely and uh, the Carolinas are going to get a lot of rain from this if this recurves even if it's west of Florida so everyone in the southeast United States and far eastern Gulf Coast should be monitoring the storm quite closely as it could strengthen into a hurricane quickly if it gets time over water on either side of Florida so this is something to watch and um, we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.